Hi, Jacques. Thank you for your time. Uh, it seemed like everyone was pretty happy to see Sid back today. Did things go as planned with him today? Yeah, it, it's great to have, have him back on the ice. You, you know how important he is to our hockey club. Uh, he brings great leadership on the ice as well as off the ice. And, uh, you know, you you know how Sully likes to use him in, in so many uh, instances. Uh, he's a catalyst. And so I think it, it's nice. I think everybody, uh, I don't know if you were watching practice, but like can everybody cheer when he when he joined the group, the group today? Next question is from Michelle. Go ahead, Michelle. Hey, Jacques, I just wanted to ask about John Marino. And obviously, I mean, this is his second training camp. I know you guys were very impressed with him at his first one, but just how has he changed and grown as a player um, coming into this one, maybe compared to, to his first one? And how excited are you about having him on the lineup or in the lineup for the playoffs? Well, very excited to have John. I think uh, when you look back in September at the first training camp, uh, he was an unknown to, to the coaching staff uh, or scouts at the uh, raved about him, had given us uh, great information about his talent, uh, his maturity, his ability to, to play in the National Hockey League. But it was the first opportunity for us to see him at camp. And we were imp impressed as a coaching staff to see um, his poise on the ice, uh, his decision making, uh, his quickness, his ability to, to react to different situations. So. I think the the year that he's had uh, has given him a, a great experience. Uh, he's kept learning. Uh, I think he, he's a type of player that uh, keeps improving. Not only is he good defensively as far as defending and capable of playing against the, the top units, uh, we like how he's uh, improved on his offensive skill, how he joins the rush, uh, his decision-making in the offensive zone, his ability to get the puck to the net, and, and let the forwards do the, the job in front. So uh, we're very pleased with uh, his progress in his first year in the National Hockey League. Next question, Matt Bensel, go ahead. Hey, Jacques, uh, speaking specifically about the Montreal power play, what kind of challenges that Canadians can they present with their power play personnel? Well, when you look at, uh, at their power play, uh, they're a team that has uh, tremendous uh, speed, uh, great quickness. They have a lot of uh, skill forwards. Uh, not that they have a lot of uh, size, uh, except for, for Weber on the defense. A lot of their top forwards on their top unit, uh, Drew Wayne would be back. Uh, they'll have uh, Tatar, who's had a great uh, season, Suzuki. Uh, so they, they're very uh, skillful, and, and we know one of their weapons is is uh, Shea Weber on, on, on the on the point or acting on one of the flanks. Uh, so I think it, it's a power play that, um, you know, we, ha we have to be prepared to, to, uh, to, to pressure. I think, uh, you know, we've worked uh, a little bit uh, the last couple of weeks on, uh, on uh, our strategy and really kind of um, review some of the concept that, that we work all through the season. And then we got one more week now to kind of uh, gel and, and make sure that we're, we're working together as a unit of four in the penalty kill. I think this year we, we've had good success when, uh, when we've uh, put pressure on our opponents uh, as well. I think, uh, you know, when you look at the playoff situation, penalty killing, you know, you've got you to gotta have a good stick. Uh, you've got to be prepared to block shots. And I think you've got to work together as a unit of four. Next question is from Wes. Go ahead. Hey, Jacques. Thanks for doing this. Um, over the past two weeks, do you think you've been able to see the guys progress to a point uh, where they're about as close to game ready as they could possibly get in this type of environment without playing another opponent? Definitely. I, I think uh, when you look at our club uh, at the start of uh, training camp two weeks ago, I think we were very fortunate that a lot of our players – participated in our phase two. A lot of our players had been on the ice for three or four weeks. Uh, so their, their timing was back. So I think when we got into a training camp, I think that helped us establish some of the objectives what we wanted to accomplish in the next two weeks and maybe was to, to raise the level of, of competitiveness, uh, more to work in a tight uh, uh, situations, you know, like battle situation, because we felt that our conditioning whether it was at a, an excellent level and i think uh, the intensity that we've seen in our our practice we we had set up uh, 
uh, a program uh, for the entire training camp. I think we, we've been able to maintain that, whether it's practice one day for 60 minutes, making sure that we have the workload and the intensity required to get the most uh, effectiveness out of our players, uh, followed by maybe a, a day where a shorter practice, uh, but the same thing at the same time, some intensity. And within the two weeks, I, I think we've got a good balance where we've been able to uh, introduce some uh, scrimmage action, some game action, uh, referring to yesterday, for instance, like a game day where players came in in the morning. Uh, we had uh, meetings and then a pregame skate, went back, had their pregame meal, and came back uh, for a game last night where I felt we had great intensity and, and pretty good attention to details. Next question from Taylor. Go ahead. Hey, Jacques. So the last time the Penguins played the Canadians in the playoffs, you were the head coach on the other side. It's obviously two very different teams now. But do you look back at that time as uh, a reminder that, you know, how a goaltender can steal a series, especially when the other guy is, is Carey Price? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I think uh, on the Montreal side, I think there's, there's only one player left from from that uh, edition of their team. Uh, I, I don't think, I, I think we, we like to focus on, on the present. I think our players are very realistic that we realize that it's gonna be a, a tough series. That they've got an excellent hockey team over there. Uh, we've played them three times this season. So I think our focus has been right from the start on, on our game, on our players, on our team. And uh, you know we'll have a, a game plan for them. And I think we we have uh, we're concentrating on on doing the things that are within our control. Next question from Mike DeFabo. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Jacques. Uh, I appreciate you making some time for us. I understand that Mike Sullivan reached out to you before camp just to gauge whether you felt comfortable participating uh, under these unique circumstances. Uh, I'm curious what that discussion was like, and if you maybe had any kind of hesitation to to go forward and be part of the bubble. Um, I did have the conversation uh, with Mike. Uh, I think uh, uh, there wasn't wasn't any hesitation on my part. I think I, I feel that uh, I'm in good physical condition. Uh, I think I'm uh, careful. I think all through this uh, uh, period, uh, you know, I've uh, obeyed uh, the recommendation of the, the medical staff as far as wearing a mask, uh, keeping close contact with the uh, this family and a, and a small circle. Uh, I think that's really important. And I, I really have strong faith and belief in, in, in our, our staff here and our athletes. And uh, so I think um, I'm excited to, to be part of uh, having another opportunity to, to win a cup and uh, being part of this staff and uh, try to help this organization as much as I can. A few more. Next question is from Seth. Hi, Jacques. I know you mostly deal with the defense mode, but I'm going to ask you a forward question. Uh, you have Jared McCann filling in as your number three center right now. You've seen what a, what a strong number three center can do with a guy like Nick Benino. What's important for that role and the success this team hopes to have? Well, I think uh, I think the, the, the third line or even fourth line, I think, are, are really crucial when you get into the playoff, like the depth. And as you mentioned, when uh, when we won cups in 16 and 17, uh, whether it was Nick Bonino or Matt Cullen, who were our center, uh, actually uh, Nick Bonino in 2017 got injured, uh, you know, blocking a shot in the you know in, in the Nashville series. So I, I think the depth uh, is really important to an organization when you get off when you get into playoff competition. But I think uh, you know you got to look at the. Uh, you know, at the whole line, you you got Patrick Marlowe, uh, Patrick Hornquist uh, playing with Jerry McCann. McCann, I, we feel that we we got uh, excellent chemistry on, on that line. Uh, Patrick Marlowe brings a lot of experience. Uh, he's a player that uh, plays extremely well on both set, both sides of the puck. Uh, Patrick Hornquist, uh, we know what he brings to our hockey team is is an energy, is enthusiasm. Uh, he may be one of the top players in the league as far as a net presence. Uh, he's quick on the puck. Uh, I think uh, so. I, I think we we feel that uh, we we like that line, and I think Jer brings a lot of a lot of speed to that line. He, he he's got the ability to uh, to score some goals, to shoot the puck. Uh, 
Um, you know, he's a, a good two-way player. So we, we like our depth. And, and when you talk about, uh, you know, Aston Reese, uh, Teddy Bluger, uh, and Tanev, uh, it's a line that, that's been uh, very, very efficient for us all year. It's a line that's played a lot, a lot of nights against the uh, top lines. I know uh, Sully likes to use them in a defensive zone face-off situation. Uh, they've they've had some some hard assignments that they've handled extremely well and and really take pride in in uh, handling those tough assignments. So we we feel really good with with our depth, and I think it, it's it's crucial going into a playoff series to have excellent depth. Okay, we have three more. Go ahead, Michelle. Hey Jack, I just wanted to quickly go back to the pause and ask you what it was like from your perspective working with the players remotely over these same uh, video chats and just maybe the the challenges it presented and how you guys how you think you guys as a group got through that. Well, I think it, it, it was a a new situation for for the coaching staff and the players. I, personally, I, I felt that the, it, it was uh, an opportunity to maybe to step out of the box. And I, I think what we did with our, our meetings with the, with the player through WebEx, uh, it, it really brought uh, a different dimension, I think, to our players. Uh, and what I mean by this is a lot of times when, you, when we have meetings with the players, it's the coaches delivering the information. Uh, during the pause, uh, I think it, it gave us an opportunity to step back, uh, send to the players some of the video clips that we wanted to discuss the next day, and maybe as a coach, kind of act more as a facilitator uh, as far as asking questions. So the players have, have had to come out, uh, had to bring to us like the details of a certain system. Uh, and I think it, it, it helped their learning. It helped them understand maybe as well the responsibility of the other position on the ice and have maybe a better understanding of the big picture. So, and, and I think they, they enjoyed it. I think uh, we, you know, we kept getting some feedback and I think it was, it was a great experience for both coaches and players. And at the same time, I think it kept everybody engaged. Okay, Rob Rossi. Hi Jacques, good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Um, wondering within the community of uh, the French Canadians in this league, what do you think uh, the opinion of is the Penguins as an organization? and um, why do you think it's been an organization that seems to have had success, whether it's been with players, coaches, any type of personnel, with um, uh, people from French Canada? Well, I, I think I think it, it goes back probably, uh, you know, uh, quite uh, several years back. I mean, you look at the number of players that are. Uh, French Canadian players that have been impacting this uh, in this organization, like you know, going back to the, the Jean Pronovo era, and then uh, you know, like Mario Lemire. I mean, who's an institution, uh, one of our owners now, and I, I think that kind of set maybe the tone for the organization. And it seems that a lot of the the French players uh, have had tremendous success here. Uh, you know, we could think of a uh, Chris Letang right now. Uh, Marc Andre Fleury, uh, Pascal Dupuis. Uh, we can go back in times, like in uh, even before Mario or Pierre Larouche. So there, there's been a lot of French Canadians that that have have had some tremendous success in this organization, and uh, I, I I think that um, I think it's it's helped our hockey club, and uh, I think that um, you know we're looking forward. We we had our first round pick last year, Samuel Poulain, another French kid. I think it's uh, you know, when you look at the makeup of a team uh, in this day, uh, in this new era, uh, whether it's French, whether it's uh, it's American, whether it's Europeans, uh, it's it's a mix of, of players that are uh, that have to uh, come together as a, as a unit and and play together to be successful. Today's last question will come from Taylor. Go ahead, Taylor. Hi, Jacques. Is is there any fine tuning that can come out of tomorrow's last scrimmage? And is the plan to have Murray and Jari both play the full games, or will the Black Ace goalies get in tomorrow? Well, it's, uh, we'll have them play the full game. I, I think what we're looking for is just. Uh, I think we've been very pleased with the with the scrimmage. How they've gone. It seems like we we've raised the intensity level. Uh, 
uh, every every game uh, we've raised the attention to detail. Uh, it seems like we we've improved uh, uh, in all different facets. So I think tomorrow is our last opportunity to uh, to try to to work on the details again and uh, try to to get ready for uh, one preseason game, as you know, next Tuesday against the Flyers, and then it all starts uh, next Saturday. Uh, against Montreal. So it's just a part of the process of uh, peaking at the right time next Saturday.